Would you ever gamble with your degree? Would you ever put your future at risk? When you engage in academic dishonesty, that is what you're doing. Cheating is risky behavior for you personally, and the negative consequences can be immediate and long term. I want to talk to you about this because I care about you. Let's discuss three things about academic integrity. First, what are some of the major ways students engage in academic dishonesty? Let's review our top five list of cheating behaviors that are incredibly risky and may have immediate consequences. The most risky way to cheat is to plagiarize, where you use other people's work and ideas without acknowledging you did so. For plagiarism to pay off, you would have to assume a couple of things. Firstly, you'd have to assume that teachers wouldn't realize that the idea of work isn't yours. However, teachers can almost immediately smell that the work came from somewhere else. They've been seeing this stuff for years. Secondly, you'd have to assume that there is no digital record out there that can provide the evidence that it was someone else's work. The University of Toronto publishes its academic misconduct cases. It shows that simple Google searches are all that was needed to find someone guilty of plagiarism. And thirdly, you would have to assume that there is no software that detects the plagiarism automatically, like Turnitin and Grammarly. If you write code, there's Stanford's Moss that can detect if you use someone else's code. These software applications are continuously updated, so if you read somewhere that they can be beaten, they have probably been upgraded in the meantime, so the trick no longer works. The problem is that the risk of getting caught by plagiarizing is extremely high. That's the reason why there's so many contract cheating companies trying to sell you customized work. So let's summarize this plagiarism bet. First, teachers can detect plagiarism from a mile away. Second, it's very easy to find the original sources through Google. And third, there's sophisticated software that automatically catches plagiarized material in assignments. The second most risky way is to bet on file sharing sites like Course Hero or Check. Some students think that if they use materials from these sites, they won't get caught because they're behind a paywall and these sites won't expose them. For file sharing sites to pay off, you would also have to assume a couple of things. First, you would assume all answers are correct and that other students wouldn't post wrong answers on purpose. Second, You'd have to assume that these sites wouldn't be happy to take the profs or integrity officers' subscription money and give them access to the same info. And you would assume that even if professors or TAs were able to get in, they wouldn't post wrong answers. And anybody else who's cheating from such a site surely wouldn't use the same answer you were using. Unfortunately, that is exactly what happened at Boston University where many submitted identical answers someone got from Czech. The biggest assumption is, of course, that these sites won't collaborate with academic dishonesty investigations, even though their honor codes say that they will cooperate. So some students just assume the honor code is there for PR purposes only. However, Czech, for example, is listed on the New York Stock Exchange and has a market cap of 9.8 billion US dollars so they cannot afford not to cooperate. As you can see, Chegg is collaborating with Georgia Tech to figure out who accessed the site during a two hour and 50 minute exam. So let's summarize the file sharing bet. You would have to assume that, number one, students don't post wrong answers. Two, professors and TAs wouldn't have access. And if they did, they certainly wouldn't post wrong answers on purpose. Three, Every cheater using an answer would customize it so they're not identical. And number four, you'd assume that the honor code of the file sharing sites are all fake. And number five, you'd also assume that the news stories about the file sharing sites like Chegg cooperating with academic dishonesty investigations are fake too. Collaborating with others is part of university learning. But when that collaboration is unauthorized, it's a very different betting game. For collusion to be a safe bet, 
you would have to assume that it's safe because you're typically doing it with people you know well. You would assume they understand that they shouldn't submit at the same time or have identical answers. And you would assume that it's hard to prove you did anything illegal because there exists authorized forms of collaboration. Since the line between authorized and unauthorized is unclear, you can hardly be blamed for crossing it. Unfortunately, for this student at U of T, that argument didn't fly at their discipline hearing. You'd also assume that the professor doesn't have access to the group materials. Here's a notification that 70 students will get an F and may even be expelled for sharing answers in a group me chat. So let's summarize the collusion bet. You would have to assume that, one, you can trust your fellow group cheaters, two, they will not submit at the same time and ensure they're customizing their responses, three, universities will have a hard time proving collusion, and four, professors don't have access to the group materials. You may think, when you have people or tutors write customized papers for you, the risk of being caught must be low. Surely this must be a really good bet. Well, you have to assume that the writers actually know their stuff. You have to assume they give you quality. Turns out, in a study by Sutherland, Smith, and Dulligan, that 52% fail to actually get a passing grade. You'd also have to assume they write customized papers. When Prof. Ariely checked their papers, he found that about one-third was actually plagiarized. And you'd have to assume that they wouldn't resell a custom-written paper to another student. Unfortunately, this wasn't the case for two students at U of T who both got sold the same paper. Both got a zero and were expelled from the university. You'd also have to somehow assume that if they lie about who they are, they will be honest to you about everything else. Here we have Dr. Carolina with a PhD. Well, when we search for the photo on Google, it turns out the photo is actually from Sepide Naziri. Her name is definitely not Carolina, nor does she have a PhD, but she's a very successful entrepreneur from Silicon Valley. So if it's not Sepide, who is your writer? Can you trust them? And you have to assume that their promises of providing you with free revisions and money back guarantees are all truthful. You have to assume that the customized service will evade detection. However, research shows that when instructors are aware of contract cheating, they can detect it 62% of the time. No wonder 40 students using such a service at the University of Alberta were recently caught. So to summarize the contract cheating bet, you would have to assume that writers know their stuff, they deliver quality, they don't plagiarize, they don't sell the same paper to other students, they're honest and truthful with you, markers are not able to detect it, and nobody gets caught. Finally, what might appear to be the bet with the highest payoff. You can even have someone impersonate you and take the entire course for you. This would require some assumptions to hold true though. First, you would have to assume that you'll not get caught. Here's a case at U of T where a student hired another person to impersonate her and take a term test, a final, and even to impersonate her at a discipline meeting. Unfortunately for the student, she was expelled from the university. One would also have to hope that the police would not get involved. Unfortunately, because this involves fraud, the police will get involved. When someone got paid at SFU to impersonate another student to take an exam for them, the police were called and the impersonator arrested. Then you must also assume that the consequences of getting caught would be limited. Unfortunately, in the case of Karen Littlefair, who paid someone to take an online course for her son at Georgetown, she had to go to prison for four months. Finally, this would also assume that the impersonators who have access to your personal information, such as your ID and password in order to log in for you, will not abuse this information. Turns out, in the US, impersonators have been able to defraud student aid for a total of $187 million. So to summarize the impersonation bet, you'd have to assume that 
One, no one will get caught. Two, police will not get involved. Three, penalties will be limited. And four, your personal login and ID credentials will not be abused. Those were our top five bad bets that can have immediate consequences and can really mess up your life in the short term. However, they can also really mess you up for the rest of your life for three key reasons. First, you can still get caught many years later in life and lose everything. Nowadays, there is a digital record of everything you did. There are increasingly sophisticated tools that can automatically scan through massive data sets. Fraud investigations expose clients of fraudulent companies. You can be caught many years after you graduated. For example, the German Minister of Defense was found to have plagiarized his PhD thesis years earlier. He lost his PhD, he had to step down as defense minister, and he became known as Mr. Cut and Paste. Second, because of this danger of being exposed, you're opening yourself up to extortion and blackmail. You're basically paying to be owned by them. They have all the documentary evidence of your cheating. They own you. Contract cheating companies will often blackmail students, asking for more money to recruit other students, steal an exam, or upload materials. Otherwise, they will expose you to the university. Here's an example of a student being asked to pay another $500 by Friday, or the student will be exposed as a cheater. Third, the biggest danger about cheating is that you never receive feedback. In this way, you may end up working in a field that you hate or in which you're not competent. And as this article from Ashley Stahl shows, that can come at a huge cost. So in summary, with cheating, you're betting that you won't get caught in the long run, you won't get blackmailed, and you won't end up in a job that you hate. Finally, you don't want to do it because it's not fair. You're disadvantaging other students in class because you cannot contribute to the class. You may put group mates in jeopardy and your grades are just not fair. Most students come to university to learn. They may not tell you, but they don't like it when they have cheaters in their class. Here's an example where a student actually got so angry about the cheating that they told the teacher, the cheaters were expelled. If you are one of the honest students, we want you to know that we value your honesty. Helping students who wish to learn is why we chose to become professors. If you have any concerns, please let us know. You know what's so sad? There's really no need to take a risk. Nobody wants to see you suffer. There are tons of forms of help at the university. You can get help from the Writing and Math Center, Student Advisors, Student Services, the Accessibility Center, your classmates, and yes, especially your professor.